Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, dragons of all ages, and welcome to video 4 of my Countdown to Episode 9 series. Today I will be covering two books from the Disney Star Wars universe, Catalyst and Lost Stars. We will begin with Catalyst, which was published in 2016 and written by James Lucino. The book is a prequel to Rogue One that elaborates on the events that led up to the beginning of the movie and gives readers more background on Jin's parents, Galen and Lyra Urso, as well as director Krennic. It also gives background on the construction process of the Death Star and some of the internal workings of the Empire. The book begins close to the end of the Clone Wars on the planet of Vault, where Galen and Lyra are working to create more efficient systems for generating power. The Separatists want to capture Galen for his brilliant intellect and orchestrate a change in political power in order to get him. After spending some time imprisoned, during which their daughter Jin is born, they are liberated after Krennic organizes a rescue mission. Krennic then manipulates Galen to get him to be in work on the power source for the Death Star's primary weapon. As Galen is discovering how to harness the power of kyber crystals, his wife goes out and explores some planets in the galaxy. A bodyguard working under Krennic has a change of heart and takes Lyra to some planets where the Empire has taken control to confiscate resources in order to build the Death Star. This results in Lyra convincing Galen to leave the project. The book ends with them escaping Coruscant to go into hiding with the help of Saw Gerrera. Overall, I think that Catalyst is a decent book. While it isn't the most exciting or really super plot-driven, it is interesting to get some background on the construction of the Death Star. The book also gives a lot of characterization to Lyra and Galen, which is important since Lyra was killed in Rogue One's prologue and Galen was barely in the movie. In the movie, we never really get to see it, but while Galen has a brilliant scientific mind, he is extremely inept when it comes to social interaction. This is primarily why Krennic is able to manipulate him into working on the Death Star. The book also gives background in regards to Krennic and expands on his connection to the Ursos. So while the book is not required to understand the movie, it is an interesting read if you want to delve further into the setup for the story being told in Rogue One. The next book I'll be covering is Lost Stars, written by Claudia Gray and published in late 2015. It was one of the first books released after the franchise acquisition by Disney. It was also the first one to focus on new characters that hadn't been featured in the, a previous medium. The premise of the book is that two childhood friends join the Empire and soon find their differing views of it driving them apart. The book begins on the planet of Jalukan, with our main characters Thane Kyrell and Sienna Ri as young children. The first few chapters show us how they become friends and the difference in their upbringing. Sienna lives in a society that descended from the first people to settle on the planet, and while they aren't as glamorous as some of the newer settlers, they have a strong sense of loyalty and honor. Thane lives with his family, who is one of the more recent settlers on the planet, and look down on the older settlers as peasants. Growing up with a cruel father and brother, Thane's own views tend to differ from those of his family's. Thane and Sienna meet and bond over their shared love of flying, and grow up to join the Imperial Navy. One aspect I liked about the book is that we get a look at what cadets go through when training in the Empire. The cadets are encouraged to give up their attachments to their homeworlds and live only for the Empire. Instructors also use some underhanded methods to encourage competition between the cadets, especially between Thane and Sienna. After graduating the academy, Thane and Sienna's loyalty is put to the test as they witness the destruction of Alderaan. While Thane remains untrusting of the Empire, some of Sienna's doubt is weakened by the subsequent destruction of the Death Star. One thing that I like about books in this particular franchise is that the books can delve deeper into lore and topics that aren't covered in the movies. Take the Death Star, for example. In the movies, it's a destructive weapon of evil and is presumably only filled with Imperial personnel. Meanwhile, in this book, Sienna describes how there were innocents on the Death Star at the time of its destruction. Since the Death Star was so large, many of the families of military personnel stationed there could actually live on board of the station. The space station also had markets where vendors and businesses had moved in. So while the good in destroying the weapon outweighed the evil, the books revealed the situation wasn't so black and white. Has this affected my view of A New Hope? No. The way I see it, the movies tell their own story that is always separated from the books, old and new to some extent. The movies present a well-told story that anyone of any age can watch and enjoy, while the books allow people who want to dig into such topics the ability to do so. 
Anyway, back to the topic of the book. After this point is where the book started to lose my genuine interest. Sometime after the destruction of the Death Star, Thane goes AWOL and eventually joins the Rebellion. Sienna, however, stays with the Empire, but not because she believes in it, but because she feels honor-bound to uphold her oath to serve in the Imperial Navy. This is part of what loses my interest in the book. While I understand and greatly respect the idea of keeping your promises, I think most would agree you're free of such promises when people start blowing up planets. Under different circumstances, I think this could have been a much stronger plot point, but as is, it feels like either the author or Disney didn't want to have a main character be aligned with the Empire, or at least not one we're supposed to be sympathetic of. In the book, there's a side character named Nash Windrider, and I honestly think he would have made a more interesting main character. He was actually born on Alderaan, joined the Imperial Navy, and completely believes in the Empire, even after watching his homeworld be destroyed by the Death Star. I genuinely wanted to get more into this guy's head and see what makes him believe in the system that destroyed the planet he was born and raised on. Instead, we have Thane, whose main conflict is that Sienna is staying with the Empire, and Sienna, whose main conflict is whether or not to uphold her honor, oh, which comes across as more of an excuse than a reason for her to stay in the Empire. This might not be an issue for some people, and that's fine. However, the entire reason I bought this book was that I was interested in seeing these two characters be divided by their differing views of the Empire. Instead, I got an overdone romance plot where the divide between these two characters is because one won't give up her culture. And because of my use of the phrase overdone romance plot, you can probably guess which direction the book goes from here. Sienna and Thane hook up despite being on opposite sides. Sienna sees how evil the Empire actually is but can't leave because... Honor. And it leads up to the battle over Jakku. During the battle, Thane infiltrates the Star Destroyer Sienna has, put, has been put in command of and tries to save her from going down with her ship. He drags her out in time, but upon meeting up with the other rebels, Sienna is put under arrest for being an Imperial officer. The book ends with Nash Windrider lamenting the capture of Sienna and vows vengeance as he foreshadows the rise of the First Order. Overall, Lot Stars in, is an alright book. It isn't a bad book, it just didn't appeal to me. The characters are likable, although, as previously stated, I would have preferred Nash be a more prominent character. I've already gone over my disinterest in the romance. Seeing some of the stuff that happened in between episodes 4, 5, 6, and 7 was interesting. Outside of that, the plot of the book is fine. I can see why some people would like it, I just feel that a more interesting story would be one where there is a legitimate argument over whether the Empire is bad or not. If you do want to see a good book that portrays the Empire in a more positive light, tune in next month as I will be reviewing Thrawn and Thrawn Alliances. Until then, I have been Wolf Fury 501 and I will see you all later.